function and provide uh, consistent monitoring of contract payments. This approach is commendable and should be recommended to all departments in ensuring that contracts are not used to, to, to defraud and bankrupt the departments. Honourable members, the department will be monitored closely in the in this regard, and a report must be supplied to track the progress of the set measures. Uh, the issue of irregular expenditure nonetheless continue to plug the department. It is understood that there is a submission from the Department of Treasury for the condonation of the of irregular expenditure of 10 million on top of the irregular expenditure of 335 million in cash from previous financial years, also pending condonation. This matter has been has already been receiving a, a scrutiny and the condonation submission subjected to the outcomes of the forensic investigations. We are optimistic that the outcomes of uh, and recommendations will be processed accordingly and implemented. Uh, in terms of forensic investigations, the in the office of the Premier, we wish to speak to the fact that the department has, has managed 50% throughout of its state of, as of 31st January 2022. Uh, in vote 11, honorable speaker, let me speak on the contentious issue. We have learned that overpayment of this donor overwhelmingly accounts for 99% of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure of the department in the second previous years, financial years. We understand the sensitivity of the delicate nature of the issue of the payments of his donor and has been done in the flesh of the department for a long time. We therefore commend the decision for the department to subject this irregularity to forensic investigation as decided by the department. We are, while the, remor the remoration of Zinduna is a milestone of the late government of the ANC, but the issue of overpayments needs to be nipped. Vote 12, the department has, occurred, has incurred fruitless and fruitless expenditures for 3.1 million and the investigation sanctioned by the department concluded that such uh, expenditure does not necessarily constitute fruitless and useful expenditure was inevitable and process relating to the environmental impact assessment was beyond the knowledge and control of the department. It is worth applauding that the efforts of the department to recover previous years fruitless and useful expenditures, including the recovery of 310,000 from the service provider is still in progress. The committee has resolved that the accounting officer must provide report of such. The committee is pleased with the completion of 11 forensic investigations upon the department and implement such a, 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 a consequence management. Sir, Thank you very much. <laughs> the next speaker is from the IFP. Honorable the clerk for five minutes. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. I'm going to start off with the most well-known quote of the 20th century. I have a dream. We all know that. My dream is to come here and say absolute nothing about fruitless, wasteful, and irregular expenditure. This is a dream that's simple. All I'm asking for is clean audits in all departments. Now we have seen today the problem. The Honorable Premier referred to seven possible clean audits. And this side of the house went ballistic. They stood up, clapped hands and shouted. Is that what you are happy of, less than 50% of our departments having a clean audit. Shame on you. It should be 100%. It should be 100%, not, not even 50%. We've got 15 votes. Seven of them might be clean. Do understand that a clean audit only means 
that basic You cannot allow everybody to He's the only one. I don't want to be too strict because I can be too strict. Please. Okay. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I know it, it hurts. I know it hurts. I feel the hurt that you feel. This is a government that does not get to 100% basic financial statements. Just the basic. That's the least, the lowest threshold in accountancy is a clean audit. And you're happy with less than 50%. That shows how far down you went. Clean audit does not require rocket science. It's made possible by empowering the leadership of the members of executive councils who must navigate their departments into shape. They don't do that. The MEC should ensure that the whole management develop the necessary internal control environment for the purpose of full accountability of all the resources and performances of service delivery. Honourable members, it is a disgruntling moment for me to stand here today and talk about how many times my dream has been deferred. I've served here for more than 10 years, and every time it hasn't been realized. Year in and year out, we are confronted by the same problem in the same departments, constantly fail to meet the bare minimum standards of a clean audit report. It is important to realize that MECs and their management teams are analogous to a doctor performing a service that requires to meet the bare minimum standard in saving people's lives. Where it transpires that the doctor has failed to meet his or her minimum standard, the end result would be to witness the patient dying. It is therefore safe to say, state that us coming here today to talk about the same problems and make similar resolutions is an indication that our departments are dying. This report is nothing but a stab in the back to the people of this province. It is a reflection that the KZNANC is an organization that is more concerned with self-preservation of its leaders than with meeting the commitments towards the needs of the people. We have over 30 pages of resolutions that are met with lack of accountability, in as much as we can blame a host of people involved in the failure for clean audit outcomes, the buck stops with the MECs. But who stays? The MECs. As of the 25th of July 2022, President Cyril Ramaphosa has signed five new proclamations authorizing special investigating unit to investigate allegations of corruption and maladministration in the affairs of 11 government departments. Newcastle Municipality and New KwaZulu Natal South African Social Security Agency and the South African Council of Educators and to recover any financial losses suffered by the state as a result of your actions or inactions. To be honest with you, Honourable Thank Wayne. you, thank you, thank Honourable Tiplak. Then we now move to the DA, speaker from the DA, Honourable Reynolds. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. When we started this sitting today, the Premier painted a rosy picture of our financial situation. I'm not sure what universe he operates in, but if you look at the Scopa report, it's certainly not the same that the Premier lives in. In a recent study paper by CHR Michelson Institute entitled Unpacking the Concept of Political Will to Confront Corruption, the following was noted, and I quote from the paper, Political will may be expressed in spoken 
or written words and speeches, manifestos, legal documents, but it's only manifested through action. A shorthand definition of political will is the following. The commitment of political actors to undertake actions to achieve a set of objectives. In this instance, reduce corruption and to sustain the costs of those actions over time. i close quote. The crux of the matter is that speeches and manifestos and legislation is absolutely futile without actions. And actions can only be achieved through political will. I raise this uh, principal speaker when one considers the scope of the report tabled before the House today. The report that I identified has three key components which bring this principle into question. And that's the principle of political will. Those three are irregular expenditure, forensic investigations, and consequence management. These three phenomenon are nothing new to this legislature. These are phenomena that we literally discuss on a daily basis, albeit in the House or in committees. We even have legislation that empowers us, yet we are unable to get any closer to resolving these. Rather, as the scope of the report highlights, the situation has, if anything, worsened, Honourable Premier. Starting with irregular expenditure, we all know and understand, as the Premier rightly said, that not all irregular expenditure can be labelled as corrupt transactions or fruitless and wasteful expenditure. What we do, however, know is that departments are compelled, as the chair of this committee said, to operate within the confines of the PFMA and the National Treasury uh, uh, Irregular Expenditure Framework. Yet the province of KwaZulu-Natal sits with a cumulative balance of almost 49 billion rand in irregular expenditure. As at March of this year, departments had only submitted requests for condonation and for write-offs to the tune of just over 17 billion rand. That means we're left with 30 billion rand of irregular expenditure in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. You have to ask yourself why. 30 billion rand remains as irregular expenditure. It unfortunately leaves more questions than answers. Could it be that the departments don't have the, the necessary supporting documents or the paper trail to support, support their claims for write-offs or for condemnation? Or perhaps it's something more sinister. The reality is, Speaker, there's no political will to enforce consequence in this legislation. Senior officials face absolutely no consequence for non-compliance. Where are the members of the executive in all of this? Why are they not demanding compliance within their departments? Luckily, it appears that SCOPA does have the political will to implement resolutions, which will include monthly irregular expenditure reports forming a standing item on committees and in the agendas. And SCOPA will interrogate those errant department officials for non-compliance. The question that keeps popping up in my head is the role of the members of the executive in this non-compliance. If indeed there were political will and consequence management, we'd not be sitting with over 30 billion rand irregular expenditure. Moving on to forensic investigations, let me give the true story on vote one. Uh, Honourable Teliza can maybe pay attention here. In a recent question submitted to the Office of the Premier on the status of forensic investigation, the following was part of the response. The Office of the Premier is sitting on 85 incomplete forensic audits into provincial departments and into officials with some dating back as far as 2014. Further analysis indicates that 85 investigations are still in progress, while 39 are long outstanding probes as a result of, allocation of allegations received before 2020. 
You'll recall, Speaker, that two years ago, the Premier moved this function from Treasury to his office. So in two years, what happened? Now we're informed two years after the fact that there are unfilled vacancies and capacity constraints in the Department of the Premier. Two years to tell us that, that's not good enough. <coughs> Excuse me. Then to add insult to injury, one of the reasons for non-performance of forensic investigations is the lack of cooperation from client departments. I mean, honestly, who's the captain of the ship? Does the Premier have no authority at all? This is the very same Premier who spoke at length about corruption having no place in this province and that he would deal with it decisively. In my opinion, this is a perfect example of the lack of political will. Justice delayed is justice denied and breeds incompetent and a corrupt state. Finally, Speaker, on accountability, or perhaps I should say the lack of accountability, allow me to paraphrase some of the content of the report, which clearly identifies our challenge. Consequence management against errant individuals leaves much to be desired. This leads to a culture of non-accountability and poor governance. These are not my words. These are the words of the Scopa Committee. Corruption and mismanagement of financial resources has become endemic in this province. These are not my words. These are the words of the Scopa Committee. Recommendations of investigations are not implemented timelessly or even at all. Finally, members of the executive, accounting officers and authorities are urged to adopt a zero tolerance attitude towards fi financial misconduct, fraud, theft, corruption, maladministration, and, eth and unethical conduct, and to take action timelessly and decisively. Thank you. The next speaker is a speaker from the ANC, Honorable Z.L.I. Tele, for five minutes. Greetings to the Honourable Speaker, Honourable Premier, Honourable Members of this August House. I would like to thank Ntlanga Nuyami, Ngole Masondo Sondo Kongolose for choosing me to be part of this debate. Honourable Speaker, allow me to pay homage to the heroines of this country who fought for the liberation of our people, our mothers who are holding the fort at home and at the workplace, women who are caregivers in different fields, in this women's month, Gikuluma ngo mama basi makaya, Gikuluma ngo mama wini mati gizela Mandela Griffith Mklenge, Greta Mbotega ngosa zana jamini zuma, Helen Joseph, Fatima Mamir, Jesse Duarte, Zoe Shabalala, Numpu Mele Lonjanga Seta and Diskusana and many more. Sitting je mbogo doni me imisebenzi abonagal. Honourable Speaker, this house must be reminded that South Africa is a developing country. It should be allowed space and time to find its rhythm for development, but also we need to accelerate the tempo to deliver services to our people. We should have a well-structured, internal, cohesive and sufficient resourced bureaucracy as an essential attribute to any developmental state. Correct operational procedures capacitate a state to implement its policies and staff should not only be highly skilled, also very efficient, and they must promote policies that should be based on strict performance and um, this country as it is a developmental state. These are the words of Stephanie Craig. What South Africa is aiming to achieve as a developmental state seems to be derailed by the lack of implementation of its good policies and poor, and poor accounting practices by our bureaucracy. PFMA Act 
as an act aims to regulate financial management in national government and provincial governments to ensure that all revenue expenditure, assets, liabilities of government are managed efficiently and effect effectively. Fruitless and wasteful expenditure, honorable members and honorable speaker, means expenditure which was made in vain that seems to be derailing what this government is trying to achieve. Irregular expenditure as well, as we hear the opposition, seems to be drumming on the fact that we seem to not to understand what needs to be done. We need to improve unauthorized, irregular and fruitless, wasteful expenditure and loss resulting to criminal conduct and to comply with tax levy, duty, pension, audit commitments. And we need to make requirements by this legislation. Honorable Speaker, I'm rehashing the above because we must remind our accounting officers of their responsibilities and applaud those that bring to books offenders. This is what the Audit Auditor General raised in respect to vote three and vote five. On vote five, Honorable Speaker, underspending in the Department of Education. The Department of Education is underspent on the NS NSNP grant of about 153 million due to outstanding invoices for the month of March 2021. The accumulated balance of 733 million of unauthorized expenditure, honorable um, members, incurred in prior financial years has not yet been authorized or written off. This is not a good story. The department incurred unauthorized expenditure of six million in the 2021-20, sorry, 2020-21 financial year due to overspending on program six. Honorable members of the opposition bench on SIU investigations, which are done by this government, which shows that we do have political will. The SIU conducted an investigation in terms of proclamation number 23 of 2020 into allegations of irregular procurement by the department um, in relation to the PPE contract amounting to 183 million. The nature of the allegation includes pollution between officials, service providers, fraud, um, and overpricing. The same department conducted 77 internal investigations relating to the various allegations of mismanagement of school funds, fake qualifications, procurement irregular, duplicate salary payment, and invalid pay payments. This is a sign of showing that there is a political will to deal with fraud. Of these investigations, 50 were completed and 27 are still ongoing. It's a sign that this government is doing something towards trying to deal with this fraud and corruption. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We will now have to move to the EFF speaker, Honorable Twala. No, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Speaker. Uh, please pardon me uh, debating uh, this platform. I'm driving to our organizational uh, meeting. So um, I'm sitting in my car. I just pulled over so that I can be able to, to voice out the EFF stance uh, on this uh, uh, committee. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to greet uh, you, Honorable Speaker, the outgoing Premier, also my caucus, uh, the Economic Freedom Fighters in the Economic Emancipation Movement. Honorable Speaker, the report by the Standing Committee on Public Accounts is a clear demonstration that the crisis of maladministration, corruption, and collapse of even the most basic... Honorable Twala, there is a point of order here. Just so, hold on. Um, thank you very much, um, Speaker. I rise on Rope 57A on a point of order, as well as um, coupled it with 52B, the point of privilege. Honorable Speaker 1, we uh, want to call the member into order. We do not know as um, the ruling party who is um, the outgoing premier, but equally uh, remind the honorable member, Oguti, for a member to debate in the House, 
they need to be in a suitable environment that is conducive. So for him to say that he is driving is really undermining uh, this house because he knew that he was going to debate. He should have ensured that he's in the right space and in an environment that is suitable and conducive for us to then uh, make a debate. Thank you. Uh, can I continue, Speaker? I can't hear you, Speaker. Honorable Tuala. Yes, Speaker. Uh, yes, I think there's a, there's a point of order that uh, he might be misleading this house by saying there's an outgoing. Can yeah, we that's, draw a freedom, that's a freedom of speech, Speaker. You can't police the, my engagement. Hello? You can't, that's a freedom of speech, Speaker. You can't police me on my engagement. No, misleading that's, is not a freedom of speech. No, that's that, I'm not misleading. It, it's 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 my political observation. So you can't police me on that one. Can we not debate? Can we withdraw it? Can I please proceed, Speaker? It's my observation. It's an outgoing premier. And also for yes, me to a, uh, can you the material, can you hold the on? There's another. Point of order. Honorable Speaker, I think we have ruled on this matter. If he doesn't withdraw, then we'll take it okay. formally. Okay. We are saying we have ruled on this matter. Now, if the member doesn't want to withdraw, we are going to launch a complaint formally to you so that this matter can be investigated and a decision must be taken. Okay, I think we have uh, picked up that. Honorable Tuala, we can then continue. Investigation under what rule? Which rule did it rise on the, 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 the previous speaker? Which rule did it rise on? It just rose out of the blue. Okay, I withdraw. Let's proceed. But they know deep down. Uh, honorable Honorable Tola, you are hardly audible. I withdraw, speaker. Honorable Tola, we can't hear you. No. Okay. I withdraw. Okay. But it's, it's, it's but it's a fact. Honorable but I withdraw. Tola, I don't think we have allowed you to give here your debate, not to debate with me. <laughs> Honorable so, Chair, let's withdraw. Am I audible? I, I withdraw then, but you, you know deep down in your hearts. You so know, there is another point of order here. Can you hold on? Honorable, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, I am rising on Rule 74 and 75. So I want to draw your attention to those two rules. Uh, in my interpretation, we can suppress a form of speech. A member can say whatever he wants to say as long as insulting. There is no insult. Can you sit down? I don't want us to debate that. I've made a ruling. We have passed that. We are done. Okay. Okay, Honorable, Honorable Tuala, can you continue? I can see you can't stomach it, uh, ANC uh, leaders, but it's fine. Let's proceed. For the sake of progress, I withdraw. For the sake of progress, I withdraw. Honorable Tuala, we've got a serious problem. We can't hear you. I'm saying I withdraw, Speaker, for the sake of progress, because I can see you can't stomach it. I withdraw. We still cannot hear you. Ah, uh, that is deliberate then. Uh, honorable Speaker. We still cannot hear you, Honorable Tuala. Uh, it, it looks like we have can to you? move to the next speaker. Can you hear uh, me? Because we cannot try forever. Can you hear me? We still, still cannot you? hear you. Uh, oh, no, I can't oh, hear you. Can you hear me, Speaker? Huh? 
Huh? Yeah, and the problem is that even this, some honorable members are drowning you. Maybe that's why we also cannot hear you. Yeah, they, they, must, they must uh, relax. Can you, can you find speaker? a better position so that we can hear you? Yeah, go the honorable trial. Yeah, I know that you deliberate now. I don't know why. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, can you try I, again, Honorable Chuala? Yes, I can, can you hear keep you, quiet, please? Yeah? I can hear you now. Okay, go on. Okay, I'm saying, Speaker, if anything, uh, the report should make us question the powers and the role of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts and the legislature as a whole. We must question whether the SCOPA in its current form is, 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 uh, is suitable as means and ways in which we should safeguard the public resources. We must ask these questions because the, the maladministration, corruption, and the collapse of even the most basic administration starts with the premier's office. The highest political office in Wazul Natal cannot even enforce consequence management. Officials who stole public money are still not uh, brought to book. We have eight forensic uh, reports with evidence of fraud, corruption, and non-compliance with supply chain management processes to the tune of 300 million. This 300 million, we could have used it to employ more math teachers and build infrastructure for rural schools, including CPOP Primary School in Duedo without classrooms. This 300 million, we could have used it to employ additional nurses and doctors, including oncologists at, at, at Eddington Hospital, to ensure that oncology services are operating at maximum level. Um. But this is the money that was stolen. And all we do as COPA, it is to note and resolve when we all know that criminals who stole are not suspended. No charges are brought against them. No one, no one is arrested. As the economic freedom fighters in Guazul Natal, we maintain that the corruption and mismanagement of public resources that happens in the office of the outgoing premier is an example for the rest of provincial government department. The fraud, corruption, and non-compliance with the supply chain management process is reported for the Department of Arts and Culture, the Department of Health, and the Department of Economic Development, Tourism, and Environmental Affairs, the Department of Education, and others is because the Prima's office has set an example. They undermine the law, they undermine this provincial legis legislature, they even undermine the scope. The one committee that is supposed uh, to be at the last defense to safeguard public money, they undermine us as a democratically elected uh, public representative. Speaker, outside the office of the Premier's uh, office, irregular expenditure is even far more shocking. It is shocking because when we demand clean water for the people of KwaZulu Natal, as this uh, has become the biggest problem for, for, for the province, we are told that there's no money. Tongat water treatment was damaged by the floods, and people in areas including Tongat Central, Candy Hill, Belvedere, Flamingo Heights, Western Area, Sandfields, uh, Emona, and Hambanati to experience, they experience water uh, cuts on regular basis. When we demand money for electricity, uh, roads, uh, sports facilities, sanitation, and other infrastructure, we are told there's no money. We are talking about irregular expenditure of more than 48 billion. As the legislature and, and this scope committee, we must begin to think of different ways to intervene and ensure that we can put measures in place that are not partisan. Firstly, we must ensure that we, st we start, we stop with resolutions and uh, adoption of reports as the committee, but take decisive steps. 
this must include opening cases with the police of uh, fraud and corruption. There is no need why a clear case of corruption where in 160 million was stolen, forensic investigation found evidence, but there is no case open with the police. We're waiting, what are, who are we waiting for? Who must go and open a case with the police if we as corporate do not go and open the case? We must prioritize, be proactive, have uh, interventions in instances where we can see challenges. It is in this instance wherein we can intervene before the Auditor General report that we prevent such high levels of fraud, of fraud corruption, and non-compliance with supply chain management. If Scorpa and Col thank in you, Parliament thank can you, intervene... Thank you, Honorable Tuala. Yeah, but you stole my Your time, time when I was over. talking about thank the you. premium. Thank you. You stole my time. When Your time is over. Okay, let's move to the next speaker of the NFP, Honorable C.M. Shinga, for two minutes. Thank you, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker and members. 14 departments and entities want the Department of Treasury to turn a blind eye to 13.381 billion of irregular expenditure and right off of 4.445 billion of fruitless expenditure on their accounts. The understatement of the issue is that all these departments request uh, their irregular expenditure to be condoned and written off, but failing to comply with irregular expenditure framework that must be met uh, before it is condoned or written off. Furthermore, these departments and entities are slow in performing their irregular expenditure investigation. Pro progress is unsatisfactory. This is detrimental to the audit funding. Honorable Speaker, the Forensic Investigation Unit in the Office of the Premier is facing numerous internal challenges, which include lack of staff uh, capacity, a lack of technical support, and operational skills among some of their staff. The NFP is concerned, noting that the Office of the Premier has taken steps to develop a, a framework to centralize and integrate uh, all forensic investigations under one unit within the province. Is the unit in the office of the Premier equipped enough and does it have capacity to develop such a framework that will be efficient and effective considering the number of challenges that are already in play under the office of the Premier? What is the position on these challenges faced by the office of the Premier internally and externally? Are they resolved? Um, we agree with the notion that the lack of consequence management is a primary source of adverse audit uh, findings. We ask for the Wazul Natal framework on consequence management to be reviewed and advanced. We also want to put emphasis on the departments owing the Department of Public Works to settle their areas and pay their accounts uh, timelessly. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Shinda. We are now moving to the speaker from the ANC. Zulu, for five minutes. Uh, so long. Namalunga won't get some touch of Sagit was with Natal. Sikuza Umsola and a selfless in Zantinus Fundazwe. La Pogula and Gessilu Amasumela age. Sit to do to M. Deniniao. Some lomus face of Bongeda. Imyang, it's all in building an act of Pogam Kaningi Mapog. It is under your leadership. It is under your political leadership, Tabisa, Dunangulu, that the OTP has received the clean audit. Kule nyanga ya besifu azane, sifisa kubonga, ikaze elaba njomu mama wako, egu kuliseni, kanjado na msizi wako, uwa mniko uche hovo, uwa manginza. Siafisa kubonga na kutichi, siti ume nje makuwa manda. Honorable Speaker, allow me to zoom into some of the issues highlighted in the chairperson's report. In terms of vote 13, the chair of Scopa did not spare the road in terms of the department's clearing mismatch 
we wish to register our appreciation of the manner in which the department has made efforts to respond to the issues raised in the scope on the credibility of performance, information and achievement of targets against the predetermined objectives. The departure from a primitive and unreliable paper-based reporting system to the introduction of a web-based system is commendable and, and step in the right direction in terms of managing performance. It is therefore the interest of good governance that advises stricter and closer monitoring of the new system for optimal uh, performance. It was further noted with great concern that the fruitless and wasteful expenditure of 163,000 in 2021 is still under investigation. Over and above the previous year's uh, fruitless and uh, wasteful expenditures, which has not yet been resolved. We are therefore calling for a, a stricter a accountability and compliance on these uh, uh, issues. Uh, also, we are noting with concern the failure to address the incapacities gravely affect the department financial standing and throws a shade as, as its commitment to good governance. It was and still our considered view that the accounting officer must finish the committee with the report on the progress in terms of investigation in fruitless and useful expenditure incurred from the previous years. Uh, some Lomo on vote 15, we wish to raise our concern uh, with the overpayments of the Dugu Dugu project and the and others in an obvious thorn in a flesh. This speaks loudly to the accounting reporting systems of the department. We call upon the department's accounting officer to finish the committee with the report on these and other outstanding matters in terms of the progress made to recover and offset of the, pay, the overpayment, including the disciplinary steps against the former uh, uh, responsible director. The committee notes the eight vacant posts and understands the delays owing to the matching of the department with the sport and recreation. However, it would be important to expedite the progress as soon as the matter is complete. We further uh, wish to remind the department as they execute the, the task of filling critical posts that the upliftment of women and of people with, living with disabilities continue to be our apex priority as the provincial government. We want to challenge Indoga, Mclonisha Utwala, Uguti. We as you appella M seven Zini, Ube England, you discuss and a Pamoguba Uzo Kuluma, Uzo de Pay, Uzo de Peta, Eka Menile Committee, a Shyam Tate. Aga Ponke Abegusho, Ukulumanje in Zabeti, Atabangut Ianzeg, Angagaz Abe England, you clad a committee, a participate, Siabong. Thank you. Uh, can we now move to the speaker from the minority fronts, Honorable Esther Karosh Pansi, for two minutes. Thank you. Honorable members, the South African Budget Guide and Dictionary defines expenditure as money paid out or spent by government. So the expectation of taxpayers is valid that officials must be accountable. Notwithstanding the Honorable Premier statement earlier, that gave a pat on the back of some departments on reducing irregular expenditure in billions, mind you. But honorable members, this still presents this honorable house with a moral hazard if, if we do not resolve on stringent, timiest consequence management. Honorable, honorable Takarash Pansi. Yes. Would like to see you. Okay. Thank you. But honorable members, this still presents this honorable house with a moral hazard if we do not resolve on stringent time is consequent management by culprit departments. This honorable house needs to keep departments disciplined on performance budgeting and provincial treasury should work on such a business toolkit, giving departments a practical handbook on sound fiscal management. Our experience tells us that procurement processes are tested and evaluated by the Auditor General, 
And this exercise specifies the amounts of irregular expenditure. Condemnation rejection by provincial treasury only confirms that every bottleneck bottleneck needs to be pursued by portfolio committees as the scope of chair honorable m governor has stated in the report the minority front has repetitively argued that it investment must be a separate line an item in all departments because condemnation is rejected because of poor record keeping practices department show resistance to, uh, to digital culture and this honorable house must resolve to make digital transformation solutions mandatory to enhance automated assisted decision making for tracking monitoring and accountability with these remarks the mf supports the scopa report thank you thank you honorable takarash Bansi. Uh, let us move now to the speaker from the atm honorable me parati for two minutes Honorable Speaker, thank you. The ATM welcomes the report uh, <clears throat> given to us by the committee. Speaker, Sifisa and Yerusha Kubili. Speaker, Sifisa and Yerusha Kubili, Speaker, will report. Piaz Kachaza, see ATM Gakul, Unga Kwaliswa, with Kal, on critical positions. In all departments, even the, the office of the. Just team. hold on, uh, just hold on, Honorable Parati. Technical team, what's happening there? Can we have Honorable Parati as a main picture? Okay. Okay, we can continue now. Speaker, just cut out of Unga Kualiswa from a critical post. One of the department, Kakulugazi, is the office in the bigger premier. Selo Safiga, who lends a son to Leo, Namakomita Swash when a salabu, Sekulumang, and to a yacht, a young Akwadiswa, with his car. And that hinders service delivery, and it will always result to unfruitless, to, to irregular and unfruitless expenditure. Speaker, si akela utama pachiswa. Pari ba ipegi si se lento yung nakashwa. Si abong. Thank you. Now, let's receive the speaker from the ANC, Honorable M.A. Zulu. Yeah. For six <clears throat> minutes. Okay. Uh, David Speaker, members of the Executive Council, uh, members of the, in the House, Greetings. <clears throat> Honorable members, I could, let me commence my debate by paying respect to the women of this country, and I wish to, uh, them a warm commemorative month. I wish to briefly draw inspiration from the anti apartheid activist Victoria Nanyame Zalom who dedicated her entire life, her life, to the service of the downtrodden masses of our people. First, as a midwife, NS, and later a lawyer who championed the cause of justice uh, for many black people against the apartheid regime. Her public assassination on the 1st of August 1985 by agents of the apartheid regime, making a turning point sparking widespread rejection of the apartheid regime. May her soul continue to rest in eternal peace, knowing that her in inspiration leave us at, at all times. Let me delve in the debate by highlighting the apparent and what is some issue of the massive irregular and fruitless expenditure attributed to my uh, vote seven. This remains a serious issue. However, we are happy that it is no longer an elephant in the room, but an issue we have robustly engaged and are pulling all stops in keeping, especially to those root causes uh, of inaccuracy and incomplete a disclosure of irregular expenditures by a mostly management and incomplete uh, uh, of facilities and institution. Uh, this has been reported, of course, and been engaged through SCOPA. However, we are very optimistic about measures in the pipeline to resolve in this impasse. We remain unequivocal and apologetical on our call for speedy consequence management against those CEOs 
who are responsible uh, have qualified audit outcomes. Furthermore, uh, this will, uh, we request a report on the progress made to migrate from the manual system to the introduction of the implementation of an electronic system called EASE. Of course, there is a properly trained and it will ensure that uh, there is a, a regular reconciliation of expenditure. We are also pleased to, in learning that the districts have begun receiving training on the use of such system, and it will help to monitor and provide close oversight of the new uh, good received notes, GRN, across the department as a system of internal control. Uh, it will also allow for a wider financial accountability in terms of procurement. Another worrying factor, of course, that jumps out of the books is the payment of 160 million 561 for medical uh, legal claims. These payments, of course, uh, create a major risk on the operational budget if not properly allocated. Uh, will com it will complete and cripple uh, the department's capability to render services and execute its core functions. Lastly, in terms of the forensic investigations, uh, Deputy Speaker, relating to vote seven, uh, it is worth noting that uh, there are still six outstanding investigations. Of course, there is a general view that the department uh, will come out clearly and boldly on the progress made on these investigations. Deputy Speaker, on, also on vote eight, which is human settlement, uh, let me also join the House in congratulating the Department of Human Settlement for attaining a clean audit. And also the same department has, has uh, made sure that uh, they've used their funds correctly and efficiently. Their matter, which says speed and efficiency, is seen really fit and felt. This is indeed commendable. The submission of 423 million a request for coordination, which remains not granted, is still a pending issue owing to the revelations of the forensic uh, investigation of fraudulent, corrupt, and uh, criminal activities. We call upon the department to implement recommendations made by Treasury uh, for the department to follow the relevant uh, in bringing those culprits to book and institute uh, measures for the recovery of the losses. We can proudly say that the leadership of the department and new management, MEC Satobe, has a clear vision of what needs uh, to achieve uh, as a department. We are very objective and ANC has deployed very well. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Zulu. Uh, we are now going to the speaker from ACDP, and I must report to this house that an emergency of a pair that have compelled Honorable Manile uh, to leave the house and have requested uh, Honorable Shinga to read his prepared speech for him for two minutes. Thank you. Mshonishwa, na bashonishwa bonke nginbi ngelele nonke eka mene lingo su Jesu Christ. We, the ACDP, are deeply concerned and disappointed with the alarming amount of irregular expenditure that our province has incurred due to negligence, fraud and corruption. Mm. We, the ACDP, welcome the recovery of some funds from the expenditure which was incurred um, by the Department of Social Development for the blankets and PPEs, of which 1.582 million was recovered from 22.437 million. And we note the SIU is also in the process of recovering 4.624 million of the 7.351 million from 19 suppliers of PPEs. The solution to all of this is clear, is clear godly governance. 
That is what our country and province needs with honesty and accountable leaders. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move to the speaker from the IFP, Honorable Abdullah. For five minutes. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, let me open by emphasizing, by quoting from the Scopa report presented to the House today, and I quote, corruption and mismanagement of financial resources has become endemic in this province. Audit reports issued by the Auditor General reflect the lack of consequence management as a primary source of, ad of adverse audit findings, says the Scopa report. Undue delays in conducting investigations pertaining to fraud and corruption of, or financial mismanagement, unduly long suspension of officials on full pay, undue delays in commencing and concluding disciplinary hearings, and lack of imposing appropriate sanctions all contribute to the deficiencies in effective consequence management, says the report. The IFP also notes and welcomes the slight improvement in the 2020-21 audit reports of the province. Be that as it may, a lot still remains cause for concern, as the report has reflected. Under normal circumstances, as a people, we should not be celebrating that the department has achieved a clean audit report because that is what ought to be. The celebration of a clean audit or an unqualified audit report is indicative of how abnormal we have become as a nation in our governance processes. As a result, Honorable Speaker, what happens is that we celebrate clean audits fine, we applaud unqualified audit reports, fine. But what do we do with qualified reports? Nothing. What do we do with disclaimers? Nothing. What do we do with outstanding audits? Nothing. This is very absurd and abnormal. It shows the skewedness of how governance has become thrashed and trampled in our country. The mindset of those placed in positions of power and authority has to change so that these abnormalities can be corrected. The sanctions imposed by departments to wrongdoers and culprits are themselves an insult and injustice to the people of KwaZulu Natal. For example, these are some of the sentences imposed by TSD to some officials found guilty of misconduct. An official found guilty on 18 November 2021, a sanction of final recent warning was pronounced. The official was transferred to another section where she is not dealing with finance related matters. An official found guilty on 1 May 2021, a sanction of demotion from salary level 7 to 6 was pronounced. The official was transferred to another section where she is not dealing with finance matters. An official found guilty on 31 May 2021, a sanction of demotion from assistant director level 9 to senior administrator officer salary level 8 was pronounced. Also two months suspension without pay. The official was transferred to another office where she is not dealing with finance matters. All these sanctions, honorable speaker, honorable members, are a travesty of justice. These are mere examples of what happens in most of our departments in this province. We have a number of instances where officials have committed offenses of mismanagement and corruption, but they decide to jump ship before punitive measures are taken. Nothing happens thereafter. Some officials who commit these wrongs decide to change lanes and find refuge in other government departments or government entities before action is taken, and nothing happens thereafter. Indeed, the very high level of irregular expenditure reported by for Wazulu Natal remains another great cause for concern. What makes it more deeply concerning is the fact that when departments apply for condonation of these irregular spendings to Treasury, they fail to provide the necessary supporting documents. Accounting officers of departments do this knowing very well that they have not complied by, but expect Treasury to approve their condonations. I just wonder, what kind of oversight is provided by, by political heads of departments in all these shenanigans? To make it even worse, some departments decide to take shortcuts by applying for write-offs, knowing very well that they have not complied with all the legal requirements of either a condonation or a write-off. The chairperson of SCOPA has previously appealed to all portfolio committee chairpersons to ensure that audit reports and steps uh, are taken as corrective measures and remain, and that SCOPA items remain a standing item in all portfolio committee meetings. I want to repeat this clarion call. I repeat clarion call by the SCOPA chairperson. In conclusion, Chair, 
Speaker, the IFP expresses gratitude to our provincial treasury in the professional manner they handle uh, these matters. We thank our treasury for not allowing to bow down to any pressure and pursue the handling of the provincial purse with justice and objectiveness. I also wish to thank our Scopa chairperson, Honorable Meki Gavender, for being a good chairperson to all of us and the honourable members of SCOPA who deal with SCOPA matters objectively, and all our legislative staff for their expertise in supporting the committee. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Now let us receive our last speaker from the ANC. Sekwesi. Honorable S. Nkosi for seven minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I am misled by the order paper in my own system. It was indicating two minutes for Honorable Rogers. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I would want to take this house back to 2019 in the SOPA that was presented by Honorable Speaker, I mean, Honorable Premier Sithle Zigalala, who made a profound call when we had only two clean audits at that time. And he indicated that they wanted the current government to deal with issues of irregular, unauthorized, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. This call had a very clear meaning to some of us who are doing oversight, uh, coupled with the decision of the National Treasury of devolving the work of the condonation of irregular expenditure has made our work a bit easier as oversight structures. Honorable Speaker, the provincial treasury informed SCOPA that all departments and the public entities were ordered to submit outstanding irregular expenditure by the end of the financial year. We wanted to deal specifically with uh, the with vote number four, which is ATIA. ATIA reported the irregular expenditure that had been submitted for condonation by Treasury, which has an amount of 149.4 million rand in three tranches. Out of that, more than 5.3 million rand was condoned because it met the qualification criteria. Having said so, I would want to correct our honorable members who don't understand what is under review at the moment. Honorable de Klerk, we have got a reason if you understood what the Premier said this morning. The Premier was talking about the audit outcomes of 2021 2022 financial year. What the Standing Committee on Public Accounts was dealing with was the year before then. If you have understood him very well, talks about seven departments deliberately didn't mention vote number two, which is the legislature, which also got clean audit according to what we know. This is something to celebrate. KwaZulu Natal, since 1994, has never had so many departments getting clean audits. Go to the records. You will see what I'm talking about. Then I will also deal with Honorable Rogers. Honorable Rogers, my brother. Honorable Rogers, my brother. If you had the premier, like the clerk, you deliberately distorted it. I know you have got better understanding, but deliberately you misinterpreted it because you wanted to achieve what you want to achieve. 
The audits under review by Scopa are the prior years, not what the Prima spoke about. South of Funas and Buisele class in Les Gist in Sasso Tishabes and Gis, Mobilatin and understand the Gagut. So, what is also important, Honorable Twala? Ugut, we don't want to talk about what you are saying because it seems as if you don't understand. As Honorable Zulu was indicating, he's talking about the standing committee decisions which he has never attended. So that's the thing that we cannot talk about. Lastly, Tisho Mkul, Ukaul, my fellow student at the same period, would want you to know, if you have records, look at what happened in the old days of 1994 to 2003. It's a mess of unparalleled in the history no, 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 I'm talking about facts. You are going to get it if you want to deal with that. Having said so, having said so, because you criticize and yet you don't go back, you must go back to those audits. I will, I, will, I will give you their copies as well. So what you then we know is that through the pressure that is exerted by Scopa, we are seeing some positive moves. Our agenda is clear. We want the total elimination of irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful expenditure, unauthorized expenditure. That's our agenda. We also want what the Honorable Kaula summarized, consequence management to those who are found wanting because of failure to comply with the prescripts of the Public Finance Management Act. Then on the last one is on the question of the public works. Public works like ATIA is in the same way in terms of our own assessment. There are submissions and the lack of condonation. When I remember vividly, I don't remember even one cent, unless I'm get corrected, of irregular expenditure that was condoned by the provincial treasury. That is the work that they will have to do. There is one thing we are not going to fail to do, to make sure that departments comply, whether they want it or not, but this is our agenda as the oversight structures. Those who would want to grudge us for that, sorry to them. We are, want to do what we are paid to do. Thank you very much. Now let's turn to Honorable Governor for response to debate. Thanks, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, um, we must appreciate the contributions of all colleagues to this debate. But I am honor bound to point out, as um, Honorable Nkosi has said, that um, colleagues seem to have, you know, mixed things up a bit. And we're looking at the 21-22 audit outcomes as opposed to the 2021 audit outcomes, which are uh, what we are currently debating. And in fairness to the Honorable uh, Premier and his team, we must say that we note the improvement in the 21-22 audit outcomes. Moving from two clean audits to seven clean audits is not a small feat. Obviously, we want all departments to have um, uh, clean audits, but I think that we are moving in that direction. And um, I think that the work of SCOPA as a collective, together with the chairpersons of portfolio committees and their members, is also yielding results from the oversight perspective. We also want to... Um, um, uh, acknowledge the fact that there has been, uh, the Premier has set up an audit uh, committee, to uh, oversight committee, um, to ensure that clean audits are pushed, as, as well as the fact that a consequence management framework has been introduced and implemented in the province. These are steps in the right direction. And we want to also say, as Scopa Chairperson, uh, Honorable Speaker, that we are not adversarial uh, with the provincial government. Rather, we want to work, work with them to improve governance in the province because we are all KwaZulu-Natal. 
And as such, we need to work together to make this province the province that we want it to be. However, there are certain things we do believe that there has to be a firmer hand on the actions of officials. Consequence management, um, the uh, investigation and condemnation of irregular expenditure and disciplinary actions fall square in the court of officials of departments. And we then want to urge members of the executive, led by the premier, to actually take a firmer hold of the processes and ensure that this is what is done. Because should we sort these things out, we would have much improved outcomes in the province. Having said that, Chairperson, um, we um, are receiving responses from departments in relation to the follow-up hearings. And uh, we want to urge that all responses are submitted to us so that we can deal with them. We believe that the follow-up hearings serve a very good purpose because they ensure that rather than us waiting for final audit outcomes, we are intervening in problem areas as COPA. Um, and uh, I want to also agree with what Honorable Nkosi has said about the uh, colleague from the EFF. Um, the absence is noticeable in SCOPA meetings, so I think that, um, you know, the comments are a bit unfounded, but we'll forgive you if, you if you do promise to attend the meetings so that you can make your contribution there as well. But all in all, Chair, uh, Honourable Speaker, thank you very, very much to everyone, and we look forward um, uh, to working together to uh, achieve improved audit outcomes. Thank you, thank you, Honourable Governor. So thank you, Honourable Members. We have now come to the end of the scope of follow-up hearing support on the 2020-2021 report of the Auditor General debate. The House now needs to vote on the Standing Committee on the Public Accounts 2020-2021 AG report. So as per the request of the SCOPA, I now put the question to the House, which is as follows. The KwaZulu Natal legislator agrees to adopt the report of SCOPA. And as I indicated prior to the start of the debate, I will now go party by party to obtain the vote and thereafter check if any member wishes to record an individual vote. Starting with the official opposition, the IFP. Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition, Honourable Premier, Honourable Members. The IFP supports the SCOPA report. Thank you. Followed by the TA. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Democratic Alliance supports the report. The EFF. EFF, EFF, so we'll pass on, NFP, Honourable Speaker, the National uh, Freedom Party will move to support the SCOPA report. Thank you. Minority Front. Honourable Deputy Speaker, the Minority Front supports the SCOPA report. Thank you. ACDP. Ghana mandate. ATM. ATM. No longer there. The ANC. Honourable Speaker, the ANC supports the SCOPA report. Uh -huh. Okay, members, I have the votes uh, of most of the parties. So is there any member who wishes to express an individual vote 
that is different from their party votes or to abstain? Looks there is none. Uh, the secretary, can I ask for the tally of the votes then? And uh, Mr. Speaker said votes in favor 66, vote against zero, abstention zero. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, members, I therefore formally declare the, the results of the vote as follows vote in favor. Six six vote against zero abstention zero the A's have it. Uh, which brings us to the end of this uh, debate. Now the last item is a report by the MEC for Economic Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs on their departmental performance against their annual performance plans in line with the standing rule SR 113-1. Over to you, MEC, Honorable MEC. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, Honourable Premier of the province, uh, honourable members of this August House, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, let me appreciate this opportunity to present this quarter one report on the annual performance plan of the department. The work of the department covers some seven programs and 13 entities embracing a wide spectrum of activities and priorities. Of course, the work of the department is we believe at the core face of our most fundamental challenges, namely economic growth, job creation, and economic transformation. But it cannot succeed in isolation. A thriving economy is dependent on an effective collective effort on different fronts, amongst others, economic policy, safety and security, effective local government delivering basic services, and a real sense of social cohesion and coherence. We have to deal with all of these issues simultaneously to achieve the cumulative and meaningful impact we need. The challenge is daunting, but also humbling and fulfilling. It is a responsibility that we approach with the necessary zeal and fortitude. We understand the critical nature of the tasks before us. Table together with this narrative report, and I hope members have received it, is the standard statistical report as against the indicators and targets set out in the annual performance plan. It will be impossible to cover each indicator in the time available, but the report is tabled for your scrutiny and possible debate later on. Honorable Speaker, allow me then to, in the time available, make some overall remarks and touch on a few specific indicators. Honourable Members, we understand that the terrain in which we operate has changed and as such we need to adopt new approaches to ensure that in the medium to long term we are able to respond to the triple challenges of poverty, unemployment and inequality. In order to deal with these challenges, we understand that the eyes of our people, of our province are rightfully trained on what this department does to build an economy that creates opportunities for all. Working together with labor, civil society and business, we developed and adopted the province's economic reconstruction and transformation plan, which is our blueprint to economic recovery. However, as the name makes it clear with this plan, our aim is not just or merely to restore the economy to what it was before COVID-19, the July unrest and the floods, but to emerge with a new, more transformed and inclusive economy, an economy in which all our people feel that they have a stake. In the first quarter of 2022, the province of KwaZulu Natal was hit by devastating floods, which was a blow to the recovering economy, just as businesses and the entire community were finding their feet after the July unrest. The timing couldn't have been worse for the province's economy. Sadly, the disruption to business and consumer activity had a notable adverse impact on the overall South African economy as well. But let us pay tribute to those who made it possible to recover after the floods. Not many of us remember that in the first two days after the floods, 
electricity, water, and sanitation was disrupted by up to 70% in the Tegwini in particular. Uh, it took a little bit of time, but we now, I think, on 95% recovery. Uh, and that requires us to pay tribute to those who wear the cold face and the face of a lot of frustration and impatience, but who step by step recovered the systems. We are still concerned a bit about the recovery of sanitation and its impact on our rivers and our beaches, and therefore the impact on our tourism sector. But we are assured that there is systematic pro progress there as well. Honorable Speaker, despite the aforementioned challenges, in the first quarter, the department successfully achieved 93% of the overall performance indicators. In a nutshell, out of seven departmental programs, the department achieved 100% performance on five programs. We have marshaled our energies and are ever ready to push ourselves beyond the frontiers of the challenges that we are faced with. Honorable members of the House, Program 1, which is administration, had a total of 10 planned indicators in the quarter under review, of which seven indicators were achieved. The district operations management system remains a focus area for us. To date, the department is currently finalizing the stakeholder engagement strategy that will ensure the implementation of the district operations model. Now, this might sound a little bit very technical, but it's quite key to our work in taking the provincial work and programs to the district level, including mobilizing the stakeholders in each district and each of our social partners. Chairperson, as a province of KwaZulu-Natal, we have prioritized initiatives <coughs> that address the perennial uh, gender imbalance. The percentage of females recruited at the senior management staff level is currently at 40% against the planned target of 46%. Uh, during the reporting quarter, a total of three female members resigned. In fact, one retired, the other was promoted to one of the entities, while the other resigned to pursue opportunities in the private sector. Going forward, we will have a strategic focus on achieving this target. Our members, people living with disability, continue to find it difficult to access employment opportunities, and as a consequence, therefore, experience high unemployment levels in that sector. Going forward, we will intensify the recruitment of persons with disabilities. We will engage with organizations representative of this sector, and we've already started to do so. And in addressing this issue, the department will target appropriate posts in the approved organogram for this purpose, which will substantially improve compliance as against this indicator. Honorable members, allow me to shift focus a bit and report on the performance for program two, which is integrated economic development services. During the reporting quarter, we strengthened our efforts to advance economic growth and job creation initiatives that prioritize historically disadvantaged individuals and groups through enterprise development, economic empowerment, and regional and local economic development. Under Program 2, the department achieved 100% performance against the indicators. The target for the number of financially viable small enterprises supported was 480. However, we achieved 1,105. This was due to the business rescue applications and the implementation of Operation Vula Fund post-disbursement support, which had an impact on the increased number of businesses that sought support from the department. Chairperson, some of the indicators in the program too were initially not planned for the quarter. However, due to solid partnerships that exist with our stakeholders and public entities, the department was able to attain them during this reporting quarter. Program three is trade and industry development. It stimulates economic growth through the promotion of trade and investment in priority economic sectors and the implementation of strategic initiatives to advance industrial development. The strategic focus of the program is to increase the manufacturing capabilities of the province and to support our industries to remain globally competitive and sustainable. Key to the work of the program includes assisting industries to access local global value chains and international markets. Under sector development, we had planned a target of 25%, which relates to the percentage of sustainable projects implemented. Preliminary planning activities were undertaken for all projects, including bills of quantities, engineers' reports, designs for livestock processing, fertility, agro processing, converted containers, and the BPO sites assessments were undertaken. So this target was achieved. I may digress to just talk about the BP business processing outsourcing sector, which is a rapidly growing sector. And 
and not many would know that at the moment we're sitting at about 15,000 people employed in this business processing, business process outsourcing sector. There's a potential to move to 50,000 in the next four years if we give it the necessary support. Of course, this is not to happen by accident. It's part of a national framework and incentive that is given. In fact, South Africa is now regarded as a number one in Durban, number one in, in, in the country. Of course, Gauteng and Western Cape have a significant percentage of this sector as well. So during the reporting quarter, Program 3 achieved 75% performance against the plan target. The Business Regulations and Governance Unit, which is Program 4, and has three sub-programs, namely Regulation Services, Consumer Protection Services, and Policy and Legislation. The purpose of business regulations is to manage and implement the constitutional and legislative mandate of the province in relation to liquor and gaming and betting, uh, consumer and regulation services in terms of applicable liquor, consumer and business legislation. The program also has an oversight over two entities, namely the KZN Liquor Authority, as well as the KZN Gaming and Betting Board in terms of policy and, and, and legislation. Of course, it's a sector now that's also receiving much attention because of the killings in taverns and other establishments and the enforcement campaign is being appropriately uh, increased to respond to the situation. During the reporting quarter, we were able to attain 100% performance under this program. We had planned 150 business inspections, but due to non-compliance with applicable legislation at a municipal level, a concerted effort was placed on compliance, resulting in 184 business inspections against the set target of 150. Honorable members, through program five, which is economic planning, we continue to intensify our efforts. Uh, this is more a economic information for policy and strategy information and the identification of spatial economic interventions through gathering of economic data, micro and macroeconomic analyses and economic modeling. To this effect, we attained 100% performance under this program through the production of the quarterly economic publications. Honorable members, it is no secret that the tourism sector in KZN in particular had been hard hit by the triple threat over the past two years. We face the global pandemic of COVID-19 like the rest of the world. But over and above that, this province had to deal with civil unrest and, of course, the devastation of the floods. So even though we faced all the odds and the negative publicity about our destination brand domestically and globally, the one thing that has become abundantly clear is the resilience of our province. I do believe that this is a reality that makes our beautiful province of ours stand head and shoulder amongst the rest. I must hasten to say that tourism development, which is program six, is tasked with planning and policy making, regulation and monitoring, facilitation and implementation, coordination, as well as development and promotion of tourism in line with national imperatives. During the reporting quarter, we obtained 100% performance for tourism development. This is largely accredited to our efforts and initiatives aimed at rebuilding the tourism sector after the impact of COVID-19, the unrest and the floods. Last but not least, Program 7 deals with environmental management. Our purpose is mainly to promote environmentally sustainable development and climate resilience in the province. As you may be aware, we have been providing environmental services using a decentralized model for more than 10 years. Our sub-programs under Program 7 include policy coordination and environmental planning, climate change management, environmental compliance monitoring and enforcement, environmental quality management, coastal and biodiversity management, and environmental empowerment services. During the quarter under review, we are able to achieve 100% of the planned targets of this program. It is worth mentioning that the recent floods were the main contributor to some of the challenges that were encountered by the program, which of course resulted in the declaration of the disaster. And I don't need to remind everyone of the extent of the damage, the debts, uh, and the infrastructure recovery that we've had to, to deal with. Honourable Chair, uh, it's perhaps appropriate, although it's been dealt with in previous debates this morning, to record that the department has just been advised that it has received its second successive uh, clean audit outcome, and we take this opportunity to congratulate the HOD and the CFO and all staff who made that possible. Also noteworthy that out of our 12 entities, nine of them received clean audits, 
and three received unqualified audits. So we appreciate this improvement and continue to strive to maintain this particular standard. In conclusion, Honorable Chairperson, we remain steadfast in our resolve to extricate the citizens of our province from the bondage of poverty, inequality and unemployment. We are very clear that each and every person has a role to play in growing the economy of this province. We do not subscribe to the view that they are providers and passive recipients. We are all capable partners with distinct roles and responsibilities in the struggle to attain economic transformation and thereby economic participation. The journey begins by strengthening local economies and ensuring that they are integrated into the mainstream economy. These are tasks for all of us, for each sector. Corporate business has a major role to play, and we are pleased with the announcement that Toyota has restarted produ production at its prospect and factory. This is on the back of its multi-billion run expansion for the Toyota Cross production line. We are also pleased with the multi-billion run investment decisions reflected in the following, the Tetra Pak investment of 500 million, adding 120 jobs, Web have a call center's investment of 500 million, which will initially create 350 jobs, but growing to 2,000 in the next two years. Blythdale Coastal Resorts, 800 million investment. Capita BPO investment of 120 million. Mauritius based company Pro Textile will be investing 350 at the Azakeni Industrial Estate, creating approximately 1,650 jobs. Nyanza investment, 4.6 billion, 200 jobs. Kerry Foods, Hammersdale, 650, and then Psycho, Investec-backed Corobic development of 6.5 billion, which is a new investment. Wilma Processing under construction, 1.3, and finally the Zulti South expansion of 6.5 billion, which will start to roll out. And uh, and last but not least, the Pepco Logistics Facility at the Keystone Business Park in Hammersdale, creating 2,200 jobs. However, our township and rural economy revitalization strategy remains a non-negotiable cross-cutting issue. Therefore, programs such as Operation Vula, Rasset, Enterprise Development, Bulk Buying, Semela Traders Fund, and the Informal Sector Program are critical to building an economy that is truly inclusive. The corporate sector cannot be an island to this sector. We must have dynamic linkages to the value chain of each industry. We are encouraged by the commitments shown. All of us, government, business, labor, and civil society, have to be accountable for our commitments towards a productive, thriving economy. And an M&E framework is being finalized so that all our work will be measured. Finally, we are not losing sight of initiatives that will firmly locate our economy in the 21st century. We are determined to improve our ICT infrastructure and connectivity generally. We applaud the creativity of our young entrepreneurs, such as Nati Mbele of AdNotes, who brought in that internet connectivity to the rural community of Kwatolo. We applaud the work of the Itegwini municipality, who shall later this year go out to market for opportunities in the independent power producing sector. We applaud the work of Richards Bay IDZ, who are working hard to explore the opportunities in the electricity and gas sectors. Also fundamental is the continuing building of confidence in our province and its people. Let me repeat that. Fundamental is the building of confidence in our province and its our people. So what we say and what we do is critical to building that confidence. It is in our hands. We will not allow others to define KwaZulu-Natal in negative terms. We, you and I, and every other stakeholder must rise and work in unison. Let our actions speak. Wazulu Natal is rising. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable MSC Pillay. Uh, we have come to the end uh, of this proceeding for today. Sinbong and Jango, we partagase and contribution to the success uh, of the sitting. Let's hope everybody here will go out uh, and participate in many events to celebrate the Women's Month and also to go and play a part 
uh, in the struggles against gender-based violence. Uh, with those words, on that note, the House is adjourned. So, you dear, Sibonga Kakul. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Hey, God.